Hello there. How the hell are ya? I'm doing alright. It's June 19th, Friday the 19th. See how I knew that immediately today? And you are watching another edition, hopefully played on the right day, of Same Chick, Different Dog Presents, Lauren Michaels. Watch this, please. So, so here it is, June 19th. And you know what? I guess right off the bat, I have to tell you that. Did you get this current issue of Newsweek? It's got these guys on front. Have you seen this movie? Is it out yet? I'm going to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it pretty badly. I want to see that. I want to see The Truman Show. I want to see it. There's a lot of movies I want to see. You know what movie I did see, though? A Perfect Murder. Did you hear about that one? It's with Michael Douglas and... Uh, the younger Michael Douglas, not the Mike Douglas of TV talk show fame. Though, you know what? Quite frankly, I'd love to see Mike Douglas, TV talk show Mike Douglas, in a movie. I'd like to see that guy have a show. Just, I loved his show. When I was little, I loved the Mike Douglas show. I loved when uh, Dom DeLuise was on the Mike Douglas show because he was just so ridiculous. And Mike used to have, like, guest hosts, like, for the whole week, basically. Right? He'd have a guest host. I loved that. I loved that. Our talk show host, you know, Leno and Letterman, I think that, uh, you know, egos have gotten big and there's no co-hosts. As a matter of fact, Letterman doesn't have guests. Letterman's show starts at 11.35. Nobody comes out on his stage until like 12.05 and they get like 10 minutes apiece and then they're out the door. Ten minutes apiece, and then m maybe he's got somebody singing or something at the very last, like, couple minutes. Mike Douglas was all about coming out, saying hi, introducing his co-host, and then having guests on. I loved that. Anyway, Perfect Murder has Michael Douglas and Glenneth Paltrow. It's a pretty good movie. I wouldn't say it's dazzling. It's not a dazzling flick. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't like, oh, my God. I didn't come out of there thinking, oh, my God, that's a great movie. But it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. He always seems to play the same, like, shitty character. Or maybe he doesn't always seem to play it, but I always seem to be watching him playing that shitty character. I haven't seen, like, every Michael Douglas movie. But, uh, I saw Romancing the Stone, but I've seen a few of them where he's like a, he's like a shithead, you know, dirty. But anyway, Gwyneth Paltrow is his uh, wife who also realizes that he's a shithead and is having a little fling with like this good looking, starving artist type. Let me... Okay, let me just ask you something, and I don't want you to be thinking that, you know. Let me just phrase it like this. When I go to the movies, I basically want to see... No, because you know what? I'm going to get a lot of calls from Christy, specifically. I just... Claire Danes had... Or not Claire Danes. Gwyneth Paltrow, she's got, like, these things on her face... And she's an attractive woman, but these things totally, to and I don't, they just totally, they totally take my attention off of her acting and her, the rest of her. And I, and I, I know this sounds so shallow, but it's just like, if I'm going to see like a really huge close up and I'm paying like, 875 to see it. I want it to be perfect. But I don't want it to be distracted by these things she's got. And it's not like she's got one thing. Because that's not a big deal. You get one thing. It's like a, you know, I've got one thing. I got this right here. It's like a beauty marker or mole or whatever. But she has like these like like five to 10 things like through her eyebrows and all over and I just it's not that it's like unattractive, it's just very distracting for me. 
and I'm thinking to myself, I would if I would really have them removed. If I knew that there was going to be like close-ups of me in the throes of passion, and I had a couple things through my eyebrows and on my forehead and on my face, I, you know, I just get them removed. You know. Has anybody else noticed that? Christy, is that wrong? Two five two two five five three. Two five two two five five three. I don't mean to sound mean, and I'm not saying. I mean, she's a very, very attractive woman. And you know what else bothers me is that here, like, she is like I don't know how old she is, but she looks like she's between 28 and 32. To me, that's what she looks like. If she's a little older, that's fine. If she's a little younger, I mean, she looks in that age range. She looks like the you know around in the friends age, maybe a little older than the friends, but. And I mean, there, 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 those friends. And Michael Douglas is like ridiculously, you know, 55 ish. Why am I seeing all these movies with these older guys with women that are like, you know, not half the ridge, but certainly, certainly much younger? Well, I want to see some movies with older women and younger guys. More of that. I mean, it's and it's not like, you know, and it the movie's not expressing. I'm gonna be pulling eyelashes out in a second. It's not like you know, that's the plot of the movie is older guy has younger wa- wife. It's just you know, man and wife. Uh, I'm sorry, Gwyneth Paltrow, very attractive, distracting things on her forehead. I'm sorry. The movie, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it a 6. Which isn't bad. You know what I'm saying? It's not bad. I saw it by myself. Because uh, where I was over the weekend got hit by lightning and the power went out. So it started getting dark and I was like all alone. And I'm like, oh, I'm getting the hell out. I'm going to go watch a movie, for God's sakes. And I came back, and sure enough, the electric guys were outside. For like 15 hours, we were without power. And the electric guys were outside. And uh, the reason we were out without power was because actually a squirrel had crawled in the middle of the lightning and thunderstorm of last week, had crawled out onto the wire, and he got zapped. <laughs> you got to imagine me, animal lover. You're just a ridiculous animal lover. And maybe you could put yourself in this situation, going up to the electric guy and saying, "Oh, I'm so glad you're here fixing this stuff. What happened? You know, I just heard this big noise." And he just like, you know, he's like a gruff, burly guy, that little guy, and he just points to the squirrel who's like, you know, just like at the side of the road, all like dead. And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> I felt horrible." And he just looked at me like I was insane. He goes, "You can blame him for your troubles." And I was like, blame him. My God, he's dead. I, you know, I'd rather have my power out for two days than kill a squirrel. You know, I don't want. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. It was just such a, a scene because it's it was pouring still when they were fixing stuff. And I just was like, <laughs> he just knocked the wind out of me when he just pointed to the poor little animal at the side of the street. It was really, it was quite horrific for me. But uh, that's that's what happens, I guess. He says what happened to me. All right, so Yankees two in a row to Baltimore. I don't like that. Is that the first time since like really early in the beginning that they've been lost two in a row? I don't like that at all. It makes me sad. I don't want. I don't. I don't want to think of my Yankees losing to anybody. And I've gotten some calls about watchers of this show who would be interested in going to a, a Yankee game. Kathy says she'd be willing to spend the $45 to get a really good ticket. That's a girl, Kathy. See? That makes me very happy. So if you want to go, if you want to try to get some sort of Yankee field trip together, 252-2553, 252-2553, we can all meet maybe down like, I don't know, if what, I guess maybe, well, weekend games are going to be like pretty booked. 
but maybe like a night game. On a weekday. You know what I'm saying? There's hard, there, there, you know, if you go to a Yankee game on a Monday night, the, the stadium is about a third of the way full. You can pretty much pick your destiny as seat wise. Alrighty. I wanted to talk about something else. It's, oh. What's going on with China? Are they our allies? Why would they be? They're a foul group over there. And I'm not saying the Chinese people here are foul. What I'm saying is, is what China is doing to those poor Tibetans. It's like murderous. It's, I don't like it. I don't like it at all, one bit. And I think that something should be done. Can't we do something? Can't we strong arm them? Why aren't we strong arming them? Why does it always seem like we're strong arming like smaller countries? Like Cuba and Iraq. Not that they don't deserve to be strong armed while Iraq anyway, but I don't understand or you know, even Vietnam, it's like we're always picking these countries that are like, you know and we're not always successful. Is it because China's too big and we don't want to strong arm them? They're fucking killing people ridiculously. Ugh. It makes me sick. It makes me sick as a dog. Can't we do something about that? I mean, we were in a cold war with Russia for years and years and years. Why can't we get in a little cold war action over there? Let's just turn our backs on them. What are we really getting from them? Knickknacks? I don't know if I don't even know what China exports. I really don't. I do know that if you are pregnant with your second child, you're gonna have an abortion unless you you hide it over there. I do know that that's still the the case. I mean, I don't understand it. There's a lot of poverty over there. Is it, Do we only like them because of Hong Kong now? Is that what the deal is? I don't understand. If you know the answer to any of this China mystery, I really think that we should just not be talking to them. I think we should not be talking to them, and I think we should, I think we should send troops in to help these Tibetan folks. Can't we send troops in? I mean, I know it's like they're all peaceful and stuff and whatnot, but we can send in some peaceful boys with machine guns to, you know, to stand around there. Can't we? Is that ridiculous? I don't know. I just feel bad for them. I just, they're, it's horrible over there. It's not even, it's like, it's, in, it's inhumane. And to me, that's like a, that's like an offense, punishable by some sort of something or other. For fuck's sake. Alrighty. 252 2553. 252 See, now that's a thing that I'm sure Lee will call me up on. Lee is like so politically in the know. So politically in the know. If I ever really have any questions, I guess I could just always ask Lee. I'm sure he'll call up. Or you can email me at samechick at AOL dot com. It's two five two two five five three or same chick at AOL dot com. Now what's this deal with Stephen Brill, editor of Content Magazine? I've watched a couple of news stories on Stephen Brill and his magazine and uh his Ken Starr cover story but I have to ask the question is this Stephen Brill and I'm pretty sure he is the same Stephen Brill from Court TV why isn't anybody saying anything about that I mean are they saying about it I've just seen like even today I was flipping through the channels I had them 
they had them on uh, they had it like on t- the Today Show on different news stories but no one says you know editor of Content Magazine and founder of Core TV like I founded Core TV if it's the same guy and I'm pretty sure it is I would be mentioning that Because everybody who likes Core TV will be like, oh, well, maybe I'll get the magazine. Pictures of him, and it looks like it's the same guy. So, how much cash must, must that guy have for starting Core TV? Everybody, you know, there's always like a, a tr- like I don't, I haven't watched in a while, but when the OJ thing was on, I was glued to my set. I would be taping it during the day while I was at work. It was ridiculous. I was just glued to the set. I was totally, I mean, I love him, uh, Core TV. I just haven't watched it recently. I just haven't had any time to. You know the deal. You know the deal. I haven't had time for much lately. Work has been very busy. All right. So let's not be friends with China anymore. Only go see The Perfect Murder if you're not easily distracted by facial things on women who are otherwise extremely attractive. Cross your fingers that the Yankees go on another huge winning streak. Uh, What else do I have to say? You know, I knew it... I should write this shit down because I come in here with an idea of what I'm going to talk about. Actually, I started talking about the Ken Starr thing, right? I didn't really finish. So anyway, wasn't it just a matter of time before we found a little wacky information about Ken Starr? And you know what? Just because he's like leaking information, I mean, is anybody surprised that he's like a character like that? I'm not. He's he's ridiculous. I'm waiting for somebody to come out and really, really say something bad about Ken Starr. Like, something really bad. Like, you know, his name used to be this, and he was a pedophile. Or he's, you know... He just looks like somebody who's, like, not on the up and up. He just looks like he's, like, a crafty bastard that's had some sort of weird past. Can't somebody find something on that guy? just for the hell of it and Monica Lewinsky doing Vanity Fair spreads I have to tell you Monica is a little on the plump side you know what I'm saying Her, she's got a very cute face and the potential to be ridiculous is totally there as much as she's like totally a weirdo and just kind of like zany I think if she lost like I would say she has to lose 80 pounds I'd say 80 pounds I think I'd say right now she's looks like she's about 200 so maybe not 80 maybe she needs to lose like 70 or 60 pounds and then those pictures would come out really nice, right? Those would be some damn nice pictures of her. But I don't know that I'm going to want to see them right now. You know what I'm saying? I don't know that anybody's going to... Well, you know, people are going to buy them anyway. But you know what? They're probably She's probably not even... It's probably just like hiding her stuff. You know, creative hiding. Photographers are really great sometimes, and they can hide the shit out of anything or they can just really blow something out of proportion I'm not looking forward to those pictures though I'll probably see them but I just think it's a weird move for her to do anyway because it's almost like okay look how cuckoo she is you know what I'm saying I don't think it's a good move for her to do that and I hear there's hardly no article at all it's only like a paragraph so it's just like, if you're going to go to Vanity Fair and talk and say, okay, I want to give my story, I want to be represented, and I want people to really hear what, what's going on with me, 
and then they take a picture of you on your couch, well, that's one thing. But they write like a four sentence article, and then there's pictures of you romping and, you know, whatever she's doing. I just don't think that's a good idea right now. Or, you know what I'm saying? Get on the exercise bike for a couple months. Cut out the carbohydrates like I had to. And uh, go to Playboy for a million dollars. I mean, I don't know what Vanity Fair is paying her, but I know whatever. I know Playboy probably would love to have have her if she was looking really fine. They would love that. And like I said, she's really a cute girl. If you really look, she's really got like a cuteness about her. But it's just like it's she's just a little too chubby to be uh, to be sporting her wares. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing wrong with being chubby at all. Some people feel very comfortable at higher weights, and that's fine. But you just don't be sporting your wares. You know. Sporting your wares is for, you know, others. I guess. So I hope no one's offended at me because of that. Oh, boy. So... So I have to tell you, not this Friday, though this Friday, Dave and the band, Dave and First House. Can I tell you about Dave and First House? Dave is the drummer of First House. First House is ridiculous. First House, I'll tell you what, First House should be playing at places like Madison Square Garden. You know where I'd like to see First House? I'd like to see First House at Woodstock. At like a Woodstock reunion up at Bethel. This August. I would love to see First House just jamming in front of like 20, 30,000 people. Because that's how much people people show up at, the, at Bethel every year. And I would love to see First House just jamming in front like outdoors in front of like a shitload of people people would be freaking out i'm telling you it's so it's insane people cannot stop moving when first house is playing and for whatever reason that break hasn't come to them yet they have not gotten the big break they need but they are of that caliber group they are it's ridiculous they are like my favorite band. Them. Zeppelin. You know, you see who I'm putting them in with? Zeppelin, First House, The Who. They're like rockers like that. They're rock and rollers, baby. And you need to come and see them. You need to come and see them tonight, actually. Tonight and every Friday night. They start at 1 a.m. And they rock and roll their way till 4 a.m. So you get three hours of solid, solid exercise, dancing around. If Monica Lewinsky came and saw First House every Friday night, within eight weeks, she'd be worthy of showing her wares in, in any magazine. Because you, you literally dance your ass off. Ugh, I love that band. Love it. This Friday, tonight, and next Friday... Also, First House is the Friday Night House Band at Nightingale's, 13th Street and 2nd Avenue. Five bucks to get in. Five dollars. As Tom would say, five. And I think Tom doesn't recognize me when I come in. Because I, I, when I go, I don't have to pay to get in because I'm Dave's girl. That's, you know, I don't have to pay to get in. Pete's girl doesn't have to pay to get in. Kenji's girl doesn't have to pay to get in. Hey, that's... Hey. We're the girls. We don't really have... You know, I don't... Actually, I don't really see Pete's girl go there that often. And I don't go there that often. But when I do go, I walk in. And Tom still tries to get a five from me. He'll still go, five. And I'll be like, Tom. And I'll be like, oh, Okay. So maybe if he goes, when he goes like this five to you, when you go to the show tonight, just go, Tom, like you know him for years. 
Maybe you'll fool him into letting you in for free. I'm not sure that'll work. Tom, you be like all hurt. See what happens. That'd be funny to do to him if like 20 people in a row go. Oh, just do it. Don't tell him I told you. Don't tell him I told you. For God's sakes, keep it down. All right. 13th Street and 2nd Avenue, Nightingales, tonight, Friday night, 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. Go and see my man drum his heart out. Yeah. Go to it. My time is running short, isn't it? My time is running short. 252 Same chick at AOL.com. Christy, this is a secret note for Christy Bright. Christy, are you with me? I need your address. Could you please call me with your address? That's all. I know it's somewhere uptown. But I'm not good. I should write these things down and keep them somewhere. Do me a favor. Give me your address. All right, everybody. Please. Let's hope that the Yankees can recover from losing two in a row to Baltimore. My God. Painful. <laughs>